set up to put your uh, running gear back on here so I can build all your front end of your inner fenders and I'm putting your uh, hood hinges in place and kind of dodge a little bullet right here so I got this one in place and I was checking and it's all nice and tight and I was fixing to put this one on and uh, it's all nice and tight but a further inspection on these it the uh, actual I don't know if you can see in the camera but the pivot point on this one you can see is okay on this other one and both of the uh, arms on the, that other hinge you can see it's actually the weld has come loose and and turning even though it's nice and tight uh, it's the weld itself and if I hadn't caught this right here we put all this together and it wouldn't be long that hood would get to flopping and being uh, being loose so now somehow I've got to get this uh, broke loose that pivot broke loose from that and then get these re-welded and then that'll last a long time and I even had these blasted treated primed and uh, mocked up and just never never noticed that now Bruce that wasn't too bad now I've got it where the pivot is stationary I just went back here and welded both sides of the rear and then had to pop those loose they were frozen extremely frozen but now all four of them actually pivot like they're supposed to so pull all your running gear out of here get all your firewall work and now I want to put it all back up under here one more time to uh, make sure I got everything where I need and do a little more measure on your inner fenders and it was time well spent because once the firewall got in place and locked in and I got your uh, master up in place it showed me it's, it's touching just a little bit right here it's not much but it's enough that if I went on with it I'd have a really bad issue now I can mark it well, when I take all this back out, I'll move that back out of the way, do all my work I gotta do right here, then paint it, then I know it's gonna fit uh, fit, fit nice. So now I'm fixing to put all the front end back on it as well, and uh, start working on mounting your anti-lock brake unit right here in the front. This is fitting together so nicely. It's amazing how uh, some of this stuff fits sometimes. I've, uh, I've, I've uh, took your wiring harness loose, and I've got it uh, all ran, took it loose from over there, pulled it through, ran it all the way through. It worked out just perfectly on your anti-lock disc brakes. I mounted your anti-lock disc brakes right down here, and uh, it's secured out of the way. Great location for it. Uh, the firewall, the wiring, I got it inside the cab now. That worked like a champ. So all this uh, wiring harness is, uh, is pretty much ran where it's going to go, and it's going to work perfectly. And you're still going to have your temp sensor in front of your radiator. You're still going to have your uh, fuel shutoff uh switches in here for if you get in a crash or roll over or something like that all the safety features of the 08 Explorer are still going to be in this 1950 Woody which is just awesome and then if we have an issue with the, the motor or something we've got the OBD2 connection just scan the thing or we can put a different tune in it or have it dyno tuned I mean this is really working out nice uh, when I got all your wiring run it's going to work out with this fuse panel I'm going to mount it right here and that's going to look super nice and right at home right here I'm working on trying to get your battery in over here on this other side uh, I think I'm going to be able to do it but it's going to take a little engineering to get that, that battery there because of the way the battery and how far it's got to set out from the firewall so I'm still studying on that but I think I can make that happen because I don't want to put it inside I want this battery out here where it's easy to get to and uh, you don't have to open up the interior to, to get to it now getting this back up under here, I pulled your uh, your body off of your, your running gear and in doing so, something moved a little bit. So it took me a while because I had to index everything back exact location where it's going to be to be able to make your inner fenders and make your battery mount and make everything because it's got to be in that same spot. So it's a really good test run to take it completely out from under here and then put it completely back under here because uh, stuff like that shows up and if I had done a bunch of body work or something like that, then you're locked into it. So uh, I got it back in here. I had to move this post just a little bit and uh, that tells me that there's something going on with that post when I took it off. So now I'll be aware of that. I'll probably put a little tension on that post and put some gussets down the bottom of it. I'll probably put some gussets in that post too before I take it off to make sure that uh, it's gonna stay in that place. So it's been a really good deal taking this out from under and it doesn't take that long. So uh, I may end up taking it back out one more time and wrapping up all the underneath and then go back in one more time. I can do it in about three or four hours. And uh, if anything needs moving, I can move at that time. All right, in your engine bay here, I'm trying to make all this stuff look at home. So I'll get rid of all this wiring and clean all that up. Your mouse center looks really nice right in here. This is the original inner fender. I'm, I'm going to have to do something different on the end of it. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do right there yet. But this uh, fuse panel, I've, the wiring come out nice to where it's going to mount, mount right in here. And that's going to look nice and factory. 
Uh, the radiator is going to look nice and factory. Your uh, intake air is going to go right over here and come right into here. And I'm going to use that fresh air that uh, comes in right here. And uh, you'll have fresh ram air into your motor. And then right here is where I'm wanting to put the battery. Now it's sitting in here on a, a stool right now. And I've got to come up with a mount. But you can see how far away from the firewall it is. And uh, that's a lot of weight to support out there off the firewall. And I have nowhere on the frame to hook it. So the engineering, I mean, it's a great location. It's just whatever type of engineering i got to do to make that happen. Uh, that's really what I want to put the battery. All right, now inside, you can see i got my supports out. And uh, everything is uh, in place now. I did have to move this post. I only had to move this post an eighth of an inch. But an eighth of an inch right here forward is, a, uh, is like twice as much on this end of it. And it was kind of easy to move. And all this is so rusted out that I'm probably going to go in here and build you a gusset inside here. Because the post is really all that's holding it other than at the, at the bottom. And I'll add some gussets down here at the bottom as well. But you can see how nice that firewall blend is done. And your factory air conditioner will mount right there. And your steering and all that's going to work just like a champ. I uh, got your wiring harness coming through right here just like it, it used to. It'll plug right into the, all the original wiring harness. And... Uh, quite big in here you can see all the, the room we've got just got to go around the edges and blend all this in and uh and then we'll be ready to start doing some body work all right i think i got this battery deal figured out i didn't want to put it inside i'm out of room over there i didn't want to have to put a whole lot of uh, uh time and work in doing something crazy so i found your uh, explorer battery tray and what it's looking like is i can remove this piece i'll make you a, a steel plate that'll go under here and be bent at a 90 here and I think I can mount this right in here to the firewall right here and then the uh, factory battery and factory battery size will fit right in and it'll be nestled in right here and I can do it pretty quick and efficiently so uh, I'm gonna chop this off bend me a piece of metal install it right here put me a drain on it on the bottom and uh, and then your battery will be being a nice easy to get to uh, location it's gonna be a little difficult getting it in and out but uh, once, it, once it's in there, um, it'll be pretty easy to service your uh, cable ends and stuff. I took your original uh, Ford battery bracket here, battery tray, and I cut off all that part where they had it. It came way down right in there. And I made this little piece, and this is 3 16 plate. And I'll actually fasten uh, this tray into this plate and then make this plate where it bolts to the firewall. And uh, I'll put a little kicker down at the bottom, got some little drain holes right here. I'll probably glue and seal all this, make it all one unit, uh, treat and prep this first before I put it on to help produce that uh, battery acid uh, that'll get on it here and there. And uh, that'll make a really nice battery tray and you'll be able to use your original uh, mount to hold it in place and it'll hold the original battery for the Explorer. It's kind of a complex piece because I have to build something that's out away from the firewall enough to uh, fit in the pocket that I've got under the hood and then be able to support the way the battery for the rest of this vehicle's life with it bouncing and carrying on, uh, be removable and serviceable so that uh, we can do our, our necessary work and prep and paint work on the firewall. So, and the firewall is, uh, is not consistent. So um, I've had to make this piece and uh, I've got to finish cleaning it up and weld it. And this will bolt into the firewall from the inside. Then this piece will bolt onto here like that and then that'll have your tray in there with the bolt in there but then it sticks out so far i'll have to have some support on this uh to kick it out that far so i went and got me some stock and i'm gonna put this under the bottom here and then come out here with some uh some studs because the brackets that are going to come down and hold this have to be removable because of the location the battery has to come in from this side so you'll have to be able to easily remove this bracket off the end of this to get the battery in and out it, it's a lot of work to get this battery in this location, but it'll pay off in the long run because it really needs to be under the hood. It was a little involved, but uh, here it is, and it is outstanding. And All right, let me show you the finished product. There's your uh, battery tray. Got some supports here and a support on the inside. And I uh, got the factory hold down right there, and uh, it's looking good. Show you how it looks from under here. So there it is there. And now I'll be able to uh, finish out your inner fender. Now that I've got your battery in place and the only spot under the engine bay that there possibly could be for it, I had to take your battery and move it up as high as possible so that I know that I have a, a wheel and tire clearance for it when the uh, spring uh, compresses for your uh, front suspension here. But uh, 
In doing so, I've had to uh, cut out the uh, hood hinge as far as I was comfortable with. Then I know your battery height is a seven and a half inches, a pretty generic battery height size. And then I, I've moved that up high enough that I can get the battery in and out. So your battery tray is about as high as it could possibly go unless we went with some kind of a custom uh, aftermarket battery. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep it a, a generic so that you can get a battery anywhere for this thing. So as long as we've got our ride height where it's going to be, and I've taken and tried to compress the spring as much as I could, put all the weight on the car, push it up as high as possible. My concern is uh, out on the road, pulling in somewhere real tight to the right, and it's up a hill, and that tire going all the way up into the, uh, the battery tray. So uh, if it ever does that, then, uh, then I'll really have to do some uh, redesigning or possibly move the battery to the back and I hope don't happen I put a lot of time and effort in trying to get this thing up as high as possible because I really want that battery up front so now it's time for me to fabricate use some inner fender splashes so what I've got here is I've taken some of your old inner fender and, uh, and then I'll fabricate this piece and uh, this is just a little chunk that fits up in there and I'm going to grab these two together and make, uh, make one piece and then that's going to protect the front of your battery and then I'll come off of this with another piece and then that'll get our inner fender structure done on this side then I got to come up with something with your uh, air box on this side uh, the inside of both these fenders is uh, is extremely complex and going to be time consuming because I have to make every piece and uh, up in this housing up inside that fender and it's, it's just going to be tough here's this piece this come out really really good and this got me a long way um, I've got it to where this this actually mounts to your original battery. I mean to your battery tray I just put in. Uh, this ends up uh, being the end cap for your fresh air intake. Uh, then this part is always going to be your uh, splash in there, and then I'll be able to add on one more little kicker piece down through here, and that should wrap up this side. And then we'll go over to the other side, which is going to be a little more difficult with your analog brakes, your master cylinder, brake lines all that over there but uh about got this side wrapped up this face turned out really really nice I moved over here to this side and uh i was i was looking at how it was laid out and then looking at how i had to what i had to finish up on the other side at the back of the uh, uh finish up under the battery and all that so i went out to the explorer and i removed these well i got off track i started installing these i, I went and put one in on that other side and it and it fits somewhat good and then I've got the one over here and it fits somewhat good. So I started to scrap what I was doing before and uh, started installing these. And then as I started putting these in, it was going to be so complex on how to mount these. I mean, they looked okay in there, but the mounting of them was just going to be, be absolutely brutal. And they're just a little bit wider. So it, it, it pulled me way off course. So I had to just uh, stop what I was doing, take these back out from under here. I've done cut on, chopped on the other one a little bit. And, uh, and basically start over back to where I was. So uh, I'm just gonna scratch all that time off the repair order and, uh, and start back where I was because this idea, uh, it just ain't gonna work. So I, I'm, I'm done with that. So then I went and uh, uh, got back on the original theme of trying to make these inner fenders the way they were on the uh, 50 model. And this was part of this one on this side. So I was able to take and cut a piece off of this one that I'm gonna weld in place. That's gonna get me a long ways around your analog brake. I'll just have to hang some rubber down. I'll buy some rubber and uh, rivet it down just like it, it would have been factory. And that piece got me a long ways. And then I went uh, and did the other piece kind of the same way as I did on the other side. And I took the original piece, I fabricated another piece, and I got this goes up in there. And then uh, I'm fixing to put it in place and put one more little piece. I'll make one more little piece over here that I'll hang some a little rubber splash down as well. And that pretty much is going to wrap it up. But I just got so way off track with that uh, with that other piece, and I don't know what happened. But uh, I just had to stop, back up, and uh, and basically start back with the way I was going. So this is working out. So now that uh, I've got this piece made, the next piece goes about right in here, and this fender moves in and out, and I really don't know where it goes. So now it's time that uh, I'm probably going to have to go and put the wood on the back, put the wood on the door and then uh, see how this fender fits and lays. And when I know how this fender, the outer plane of this uh, fender lays, then I'm gonna have to come in here and um, put these lower panels on. And they only give me this much of this panel and some of this front's gone. So I'm gonna have to fabricate a lot here. You know, keep in mind the whole bottom of this car is, is gone and 
I might do all this metal work. So uh, I'm going to get this uh, inner fender done. That's going to wrap up my inner fenders, which is a huge, complex job. And I'm glad that's done. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start mounting wood and start doing metal work on the sides. And, uh, and we, we should be kicking right along again.